How you doing? This is Mitch with the Native Survival School. Today we're going to discuss the paradox of fire and how to overcome it. Stay tuned. So the paradox of fire. Of course, that means that the greater your need for fire, the harder it is to obtain it. During adverse conditions, when you need fire the most, you have more variables to stop you from getting it, of course. So there's a few things that we can do to overcome that paradox, to try to give ourselves a greater chance to make fire in any condition, thunderstorms, Blizzards. Yes. Hurricanes. You name it. Now a lot of them have to do with understanding what fire prefers. It prefers dry places. It prefers, if possible, warm places. It prefers the ability to climb as it burns. It prefers the ability to burn through uh, material that is split, exposed to plant fibers, not the outside of plant fibers like on a twig. A twig burns great, but the outside of it is a thin layer of bark and the inside is where the wood is. So split wood or carved wood increases the fire's chance to burn through. So let's talk about a couple things that we can do. First thing is we can put a raft of sticks down. Very simple, just take three, four, five sticks, whatever you want to do and just lay them down where you're about to build your fire. We've all done that, it works great. <clears throat> it gets the fire off the cold ground, especially during snowy conditions. Having a raft of sticks, a little base of sticks to start your fire on, really gives it a huge chance because it takes it up off the damp ground or the cold wet ground, whatever the case is. And as that burns, that's also fuel. So now the fire actually has extra fuel underneath it. So fuel on top, fuel on bottom, and your embers uh, really get concentrated and created quickly. Now also understanding properties of wood makes a big difference. If there's a wood near you that has volatile oils in it, that's fantastic. That will help burn. Examples of that would be pine or uh, spruce, anything like that, or birch. It might be wet, but it'll still burn. <clears throat> also, the understanding of softwoods and hardwoods makes a big difference too. Softwoods burn quicker, easier, expend their energy really fast. So they're good to get your fire started. After your fire is established, it's already burning, your flames are a foot tall, and it's trying to eke out its, its existence against the adverse conditions, then you start adding medium and hardwoods to it to give it that good strong heart to carry forward. Now when we get started with tinder and kindling and all that, you also want to take advantage of fire's um, preference for the inside fibers of wood. That's usually why I make curls. or feather sticks. When I light my fire. 
curls and feather sticks exposes the dry inside of the plant and if there's any resins volatile oils it exposes that as well brings it right out in the open it also gives the fire something with a very small amount of mass the wood is very thin as it's curled and feathered it's very thin so it wants to burn very easy it doesn't have a lot of mass it takes a flame quickly and the flame shoots up you put two three four five feather sticks on a fire depending on how bad the conditions are even two makes a big difference up to five within a few moments your flame is over a foot tall roaring now it's up to you to harness that and add more stuff to it to grab that and take it to the next level because those feather sticks they don't have a lot of mass so they explode with energy and then it's gone so that's one trick using the raft is another trick so you have your base underneath you have your carved feathers if you can find it find some wood that you can use to carve down make feather sticks or make curls put a big ball of curls on top of your initial ignition it makes a huge difference huge fire explodes okay so that's a couple ways to do it also obviously using small mass wood like twigs works great for that next stage and so on so making sure that you follow all these rules really makes fire a lot easier to get even with the paradox when it's really hard to get <clears throat> building into a TP fire lay also greatly increases your chance because fire now has a chance to climb into more fuel it's in my opinion one of the best ways to start a fire it's naturally um, designed for fire a nice TP shape the fire just wants to keep growing into the rest okay so so far we have the platform we have carved wood curls and feathers right we also have um, twigs and all that proper steps and understanding softwoods first then going into mediums and hardwoods after and then of course there's using the log transition technique where you get a log started as soon as possible. I've gotten logs started immediately on my initial burn. It's very easy to do. You just lay a log on each side of your fire as it's going and then a log across. And you, I usually put it to the back. You just put it towards the back and roll it forward until it's basically touching the fire. And you see if it's steaming off, then you pull it back a little bit and give a one inch gap so it can let loose all of its moisture and not impact the fire negatively or if you see that the fire sticks to it and is now climbing up it it's ready to burn so you move it right up to the fire and you're already starting to burn logs once that gets going and you can just lay more stuff on top after you're good to go that will burn for a long long time so now we're talking about logs sometimes we need to take down dead standing wood saplings or trees and obviously you take them down however you can <clears throat> split it if you can use a V crotch to bucket into smaller pieces Or you use your axe, your saw, whatever you have. There's always ways to process wood. If you have to, you can take one of those logs and crank it down into curls, a big piece of it. Use that. And now the log is smaller because you've carved half of it off. Now it's a half log. You can get started with that as well before you transition into logs. You can put that there. That helps. You can also put tom with your knife to get smaller pieces. There's all kinds of different ways to break down wood 
break down fuel. Something else that carries a fire forward after it's already established and gives you more burn time without burning away really fast, other than logs, is basically the gnarled, gnarled roots of these trees. So after you take down a sapling, you can rip up some of its root section, and I find everything works. It can be pine roots, it can be the pine root section, it can be the oak root section, it doesn't matter. Um, an oak root will just crank away all night, and there'll probably be some left in the morning. Um, pine tends to burn a long time as well because of all the oils and the fat wood that's naturally in it. So taking all these things into account really allows you to overcome the paradox of fire. Sometimes I'll, during a full rainstorm or a uh, snowstorm, I'll set up my tarp. Well, not sometimes, it's kind of like every time. <laughs> I set up my tarp to give myself a clean workspace. Rain is pouring off the sides. I'm not getting wet. And where I'm going to build my fire isn't getting wet anymore. I then build my fire. It's protected. And we're good to go. My fire is protected from my tarp underneath. And I'm usually cooking and relaxing. It doesn't matter how bad it's raining. So I just want to discuss a few ways of overcoming the paradox of fire. We have building a platform for our fire to sit on. We have making curls and feather sticks and understanding softwoods, medium and hardwoods, using them in the proper way. We have volatile oils. We have um, also understanding tinder bundles too. Uh, some tinder bundles, I forgot to mention this, um, burn faster than others. You know, like grass tinder bundles. Yes, got it. Put some curls on there you got to use them quick or they're gone. If you use bark tinder bundles, they have a little more substance to them, like cedar bark, things like that. They'll burn longer. That tinder bundle will burn longer before it goes out, before it expends all of its energy. It's made of more, uh, or more dense material. It's tougher. So um, you can also use that to your advantage as well during adverse conditions. You can design your, your fire pit with the platform. You can design what type of tinder bundle you use. You could design um, how much curls you use and of what material. You can design um, how much uh, how much twigs you use on top of all that. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And what type of fuel and how quick you get into a log and all of that. And it really doesn't matter the situation. I mean, I've made Bodro fires during blizzards. It doesn't matter. But you, it does matter if you want to overcome the paradox of fire to understand all these variables. Because if you don't, they're going to eat you alive and you're going to have a hard time or fail at making fire when you need it the most. This has been Mitchell the Native Survival School. I do appreciate your time. Have a great day. Take care.